The voice of not just a generation, but three generations of Yankees fans. 36 years in the booth, and John Sterling today announcing his retirement effective immediately and saying this, I am very blessed. I'm a very blessed human being. I've been able to do what I wanted, broadcasting for 64 years. As a little boy growing up in New York as a Yankees fan, I was able to broadcast the Yankees for 36 years. It's all to my benefit, and I leave very, very happy. I look forward to seeing everyone again on Saturday. And Saturday, of course, will be Sterling will be honored at Yankee Stadium prior to the game. Here now some thoughts on Sterling's announcement. He's the most unique human being I've ever met in my life. He the biggest compliment I can give anybody is that he's an original. There will never be another John Sterling. There just can't be. And that's the biggest compliment. Every day was a unique funny strange wonderful experience i love the guy he, he was great to me he's always been great to me and uh, that's why it was an emotional phone call that we had on saturday because if you listen to him meredith he doesn't sound like he's 85. he has defied father time when it comes to his voice and he's just amazing he still sounds sharp if you listen to the last game he did the grand slam by jean carlos stanton still right there has a great rhythm he's a great broadcaster so uh, i tried to talk about of it, as I said, but he would have none of it. His voice is, is legendary. His calls have been legendary. Um, you know, as many of you know, like, you know, I grew up listening to Harry Callis and Richie Ashburn. I was the kid falling asleep, like many of you, to the radio. Like, I have a romantic um, relationship with baseball on the radio. And, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm bummed out about it, sad about it, um, but certainly, um, just want him to be in a good spot and and uh, healthy moving forward and know that you know obviously this is the right time and, and the best thing for John so um, he'll be forever forever connected to to the Yankees and and a voice of, of for generations you know there's um, so many amazing calls and you know, I, I probably, in my own way, imitate him at some point every day, making a call about somebody, you know, non si po, like, I mean, all of it. Um, so he's going to be missed. Um, hopefully, I'm looking forward to hopefully celebrating him properly um, this weekend. Um, but what an amazing life and career he's had. Um, and, and hopefully now he can, um, you know, have a good quality of life moving forward. All of a sudden, you know, just, you know, what John's meant to, you know, Yankee baseball, you know, all around the country and, you know, to the broadcasting. It, it's tough to put into words, you know, because my parents, they listen to the radio. They, you know, love Susan and John going back and forth, you know, you know, even going back and listening to some historic homers or, you know, big moments in Yankees history. And, you know, hearing John there, that's... Uh, he, he's going to be missed. He's going to be missed. Do you have a favorite home run call of his over the years? Well, probably the first one because I was sitting there next to him in the radio booth and he, Bernie Williams had a big home run. And all of a sudden he go, burn, baby, burn. And I looked at him and, then, you know, people started, like, shouting that back at him. And Bernie liked it as well. And the fact that people started shouting it back, it became a cottage industry. He signed baseballs with different calls on it. So that's probably my favorite because it was the first. There's a couple because I know the stories about them. One one of my favorite one was that he got a letter from somebody. They wanted him to stop saying A-bomb from A-Rod. And then A-Rod told him that his mother loved it. And so John said, well, if A-Rod's mother loves it, I'm not going to stop. And the other one, I love Georgie Juiced one. Obviously, Robbie Cano, don't you know? But the first one, I'll never forget Burn Baby Burn because it just came out so instinctively and it was just just great. I always think of him at the end of games when the Yankees win going through is the Yankees win. Do you know I've never seen that because I'm always downstairs. I have never seen him stand up. I saw it on film. I have never been there live when John goes into his uh, Yankees win. I've never seen it. I like the subtle... It'll be one, two, there it goes deep left. Like just the, the instant rise into it um, and then where it's going to go from there. Um, I love all those calls. Um, I go back and make sure I listen to them when I know somebody's got a big hit or a big home run, whatever it may be. Um, 
I'm going to absolutely miss that. There it goes deep left. I love that. He was so witty, smart, like just <laughs> the home run calls he comes up with. You know, we'll be sitting on the bus whenever we trade for somebody new or, you know, somebody's first game. You know, we always kind of go back and forth. Like, hey, what's what's John going to come up with this time? What's he going to use? And you go, the last name, the first name, how's he going to do this? And, you know, he always outsmarts us and comes up with something great that, you know, the fans love. We love his players listening to it. So, you know, John's a big part of this family. We're going to miss him. What are you going to miss most about seeing him on a daily basis in that radio booth? Just his quirkiness and things he would say, and you know he would come into the television booth at Yankee Stadium all the time. And just before we were, you know, going to take the open, and he'd go, "How you doing, my boy?" And uh, I'll, I'll just miss seeing him every day. But we were, you know, one of the last things that we said to each other on Saturday, uh, you know, we're, we're going to continue to talk all the time, John. And I said, John, we'll talk forever. John Sterling is something special, so why don't we cook up something special with Hex Clad, the radio voice of the Yankees since 1989, called 5,420 regular season games and 211 more in the postseason, inducted into the New York State Broadcasters Hall of Fame in 2016, and a 12-time Emmy Award winner, of course, here on Yes, he's the host of Yankeeography. And, you know, uh, we got some comments from Derek Jeter as well on X or Twitter, if you like. Congrats to John Sterling on an amazing career. I've had the pleasure of listening to and working with John for decades. He is a major part of Yankee history and will be greatly missed. And then our colleague Paul O'Neill saying, seems like just yesterday you were calling our World Series in the 90s. It's been a pleasure working beside you in the booth. John Sterling, you will be missed. You will always be the voice of the Yankees to me. And it sounds cliche, but some people, they say, well, they broke the mold with that guy. Well, Jack, they broke the mold. And you can listen to some of those comments, especially from Susan Waldman, who knows him so well. He was a different cat, but so good at what he did. We had the good fortune, of course, to call him a friend. He was distinctive. He was unique. I said this on the pregame show, but I feel the need to reiterate it. There are dozens of people who walk into the press box and the broadcast booth every day and every night to cover a baseball game. And for some, in a matter of hours, they're ready to go. It's their job. They finished it. John lived to be in that broadcast booth. That was his passion. He wanted to be there. He wanted to call those games. And as much attention as he got for the home run calls, and the nicknames which Michael and Susan and Meredith just talked about and the Yankees win and his powerful voice he had deep knowledge about baseball and if you listen to him until the end he would talk about what a pitcher was trying to do on the mound he would describe the difference between pitches and you could just tell how much he lived and breathed baseball and on a personal note I started covering the Yankees in 1991 John was always very cordial and polite to me and a felt blessed from above when he would say hey I really like that article or that column that you wrote in the New York Times and so I appreciate that all these years later yeah he would not be classified as just a broad Broadcaster, a showman, an entertainer, and while social media, Jack, isn't always the most positive space to be in, I encourage people to go find some things, some calls by John Sterling, going back to his days calling basketball, early games in the championship years of baseball. There's always You're going to find something special with one of his calls. Yeah, dig through YouTube or wherever else you think you might be able to find them. I remember him, Bob, going way back to when he hosted a sports talk show in the New York area. So he obviously was a Hawks announcer. He was a Nets announcer announcer he made his legacy and the imprint that he has on most people is with the Yankees but he was very varied very versatile absolutely loved what he did and it's beautiful to see all the tributes that he's getting today